games of the regular season all at home, except if they have to make that one game up in Tampa Bay. But Art Howe just wants to keep it simple for now. We just have to go home and win, he said, prior to the four-game set with the Angels. Pick things up. Bottom of the second, base is full of A's. Tim Belcher to Jeremy Giambi. And when Giambi drives this ball to center, look how terrible this field looks. Playing in the ruins of the Raiders-Browns game from the day before. Hard-working crew out there in Oakland trying to make it look the best they could, but Jeremy Giambi doing his part to tear up the field. Base is clearing triple. A's up, three to nothing. Bottom of the fifth, A's lead 5-2. Jason Giambi, it's his sixth career home run off of Tim Belcher. More, most against than any other pitcher. 40th home of the year, A's go up 7-2, and that's worthy of a curtain call. More than enough offense for Barry Zito. Facing Mo Vaughn, looking. Woo, that was a sick business. Top seven, A's up 7-3, two out. Base is full of angels for Troy Gloss. Your American League home run leader goes down swinging. Jim Messier gets him out of the jam in the seventh. Top of the ninth. A's lead 7-5, two on, two out. Jason Isringhausen to Mo Vaughn, and Vaughn swinging. A's win, hold on, 7-5. And Zito gave up three runs and six and a third with a career-high 10 strikeouts, spiking his September ERA to 1.77, meaning the American League pitcher with the best ERA in September is now Tim Hudson, who starts Tuesday for Oakland, which is flat out on fire. Tony Graffinino on first. Maglio Ordonez, top one is short. Omar Vizquel, seven gold gloves. To Robbie Alomar, eight gold gloves. Graffinino slides in late to break up the double play, and it's about to be some static. Graffinino said later, I've seen Robbie turn that play. We're still in the ballgame. I'm just going in hard. That's it. Bottom six, Alomar at the plate with runners on after a few words there. Alomar chops one off the glove of Matt Ginter. Alomar slides in the first, but he's thrown out by Graffinino. 7-2 Indians, but watch this. Remember that static? Alomar challenges Graffinino, and it is on. Robbie said later, all I know is he's going to play for a while, and I'm going to play for a while. Still trying to figure out what Robbie meant by that. Alomar's brother, Sandy, got a childhood flashback about taking up for his little brother. Sandy would get tossed. The benches were clear. All his songs. Somebody said, oh, no, your mama didn't take $100 worth of food stamps out of a $1,000 Gucci bag. No, she didn't wear the same suit to the club that her girl wore last week. I don't know if they actually said those words. But, you know, it looked like somebody's talking about somebody's mama. Anyway. The Twins, top one, no score, one on, two out for Manny Ramirez, who busts out the whooping stick. On Matt Kenny, 34th of the year, 28th September RBI, as we mentioned, tops in the AL, 2-0 Indians. 3-1 Indians, bottom of the fifth, no outs, one on for Alomar. He pops one up. But Corey Koski was manning third base for the Twins this night. Boy, was he ever. Circus catch there. Top eight tied at 3-2 two outs. Two on Bob Wickman against Jacques Jones, the looper. And here comes Koski. Holbert Cabrera's throw to the plate is offline. Twins up 4-3. Bottom line, two outs. Runner on third for Omar Vizquel. Last chance for the Indians. There's your runner on third. Two outs. Lines one, but there's Koski making the diving grab. Saving the lead for the Twins and winning the game 4-3. A tough loss for the Tribe, which split the rare doubleheader like the only other team who endured it over the last 100 years. The 51 Montreal going for 20 wins in front of his parents. And here he gets some help from Reggie Sanders in the eighth, already up 4 to nothing. Bottom of the ninth, 6 nothing. Braves. Glavin dealing to Orlando Cabrera with two outs looking for his 20th win, and he got it. Not Cabrera, but Glavin. Oh, okay. Andrew Jones makes the catch, and watch this. He's like... Mama's appreciative. He's like, psych! No, come on, you gotta keep that and give it a Glavin. I've never heard you say you got it on it like a win before. Well, it's very rare that Tom Glavin reaches the 20 win plateau for the fifth time in his career. Bottom of the third, Jeff Cirillo swinging. Bottom of the fourth, two outs, runner on second, Terry Shumpert. Rockies up 2 1. Shumpert swinging. Johnson at eight strikeouts and swinging a very hot bat. Top five leading off against Brian Rose. Randy Johnson, table setter. He would score, tie the game at two. Top of the eighth, one on, one out. He backs up 5-3. Base hit, Randy Johnson. Jay Bell, come on down. 6-4 is your final, and Johnson gave it all he had. Four runs, 10 hits, eight strikeouts, seven and two third innings, 134 pitches, two hits, and an RBI. His first start since August 1st. One on Conacion, hits one to right center, and Bernie Williams makes the grab, but Bernie Williams could not prevent Bobby Higginson from leaving the yard. Upper deck, homer number 28 for Higginson. Gooden lasted only two and two-third innings, giving up five runs on six hits. David Cohn coming in in his first appearance in relief since 1992. Not much better. David Cruz, base hit.
Higginson come on down. Tigers up 8-1. Cone one and a third innings. Four runs, five hits. And on the two-year anniversary of their record-setting 112th regular season win, the Yankees give up 18 hits and go down 15-4, losing by more than 10 runs for the... He raised one on Paul Wilson, facing Jose Cruz right back at Wilson. Oh, Cruz yoked the line drive. Wilson seemed like he absorbed some of the blow with his hand. Trainer Jamie Reed checked him out. He would stay in the game. He's a hockey player. Top six, Fred McGriff. And the Lord said you got to rise up. Three-run shot. Crown Dogs, 25th of the year, 415th of his career, tying it with Cal Ripken Jr. for 28th all-time. He raised one at 5-1 in what might be Jim for Leiter got up to a great start. Five Ks for Leiter. And then top four now. Leiter against Chipper again. Strikes him out again. First met lefty since Frank Viola to strike out 200 in the season for Al Leiter. And then Andrew Jones here. Robbing Robin Ventura. Jones was also one for five. One nothing Braves Leiter. And Chipper Jones is so money and he doesn't even know it. His 20th home run in 70 games career against the Mets. Most by any team. 35th this season. 2 nothing Braves. He has a 13 game hitting streak. Leiter facing Walt Weiss. Bases full top of the sixth. Walt Weiss, you know, not your power hitter. He's got the bounce of the third. Ventura all over that. Fires home. Mike Piazza can't get it. Javi Lopez. Brian Jordan would score on that miscue. 4 nothing Braves. Leiter 5 and a herd. Third, seven hits allowed, four runs allowed, three of them earned. In the eighth, it's all about John Rocker on the mound. Yes, there was a bottle thrown at the mound by Met fans toward John Rocker. Bobby Cox goes, picks it up, and he takes it away. Bottom eight, Rocker facing Ventura, men on first and second, but the Braves have this one in control. Ventura pops it up. You know, Rocker went an inning and a third, and he only allowed two hits, and that ends the inning, and Rocker is pumped, and why not for him and what he had been through heading into this game, then against Todd Pratt. Chipper tags Bubba Trammell for the out. Could the Braves have written a better script involving John Rocker, Shea Stadium, the Met fan, and you know the rest of the story. The Braves win, clinch their ninth straight division title. It's a record ninth straight division title, but to Atlanta's credit, they celebrated really as it was just another regular season victory against... Getting the start, first career start. Side armor rocked by Todd Helton. Helton watched that fly, 39th home run of the year, 100th extra base hit of the year. He was one for three, he's hitting 375. Kim goes two and a third. Yikes. Yeah, he's had a good attitude about it. Gave up four runs in the first career start. Then Jose Jimenez gets Craig Council there in the ninth with a 7-6 lead. And Buck Showalter's team eliminated from postseason. 7-6 the final. Kim, first career start after 84 relief appearances. Todd Helton again, the one for three day, hitting 450 with four home runs over his final six games going into this one. Again, with the 100th extra base hit, he sets a Colorado single season record. Barry Bonds, Ellis Burks trying to secure home field advantage in the NL playoffs, facing the Dodgers. Darren Dryford facing JT Snow. Four Ks for Dryford in this game through seven innings. Again, Dryford facing Snow. This time he gets him looking. Two hits allowed for Dryford as he looked to pick up his 12th win. Russ Ortiz facing Gary Sheffield. Runners on first and second ball gets away. Bobby Estelea throw to second. It's going to be deflected into left field. Tom Goodwin comes home. Mark Rudzelanek moves on to third. The Dodgers were up two to nothing. Still, Ortiz facing Sheffield, and Gary is not scared of heights. His 42nd home run on the year. Dodgers jump out to a huge win. Nine nothing over the Giants. Dodgers win for the ninth time in 10 games, and hey, they're still alive in the wild card hunt. Dryford pitched those seven shutout innings. He's 2-0 with a 0.47 ERA in three starts against the Giants this season. Speaking of those Giants, they've lost four or five since clinching the NL West. Cards and Padres, Andy Bennis has it one in nine appearances. Mark McGuire, Sean Dunstan, now relax. Adam Eaton, solid rookie for the Padres on the hill. Jim Edmonds, solid veteran. Puts that out. Two-run shot. It's 42nd of the year. It's 4-0. Mark McGuire pitch hitting. And thanks for coming out of the dugout. Heath puts his locum. Got him. McGuire and Dunstan cruising into the postseason. Relax. They've been around a long time. 7-1 the final. Cards take it over the Padres. Andy Bennis, more importantly than any other stuff. Ricky Henderson. That's a hard hit to third. Mike Lamb can't make the play. Joe Oliver comes in to score. Mariners up 1-0. Your next batter, Mike Cameron. Cameron has had several big hits, of course, this year, taking the place of Ken Griffey Jr. 
there's one of them. Into the gap. Mark McLemore would score. Henderson would score. Cameron gets a bit greedy. Why? Because he's going to third. Will he make it? No, he's out. Mariners still, though, up three to nothing. Top of the fifth. Who's on the mound for the Mariners? Aaron Seeley, and he's going the distance. Scarborough Green can't find that. Six hits allowed. Complete game for Seeley. Four strikeouts. Mariners up four nothing in the fifth. Ricky Henderson tries to bunt, pops it up. Ryan Glenn, nice diving catch out of him. Later in the fifth, Mariners still up four zip. Two on, two outs. Edgar Martinez. That's a drive. 140 RBIs for Edgar Martinez as Mark McLemore comes in to score. And the Mariners cruise from there. And the final, 5 to nothing, beating the Texas Rangers. Seattle wins for the 10th time in 13 games. Seeley, his sixth career shutout. Second of a four-game series with Anaheim. And here, Scott Schoenweiss having some problems. Jason Jambi with two outs walked. Almedo signs. And then Miguel Tejada, two out. Lightning slaps that through. Jambi coming in. He'll score. Shortstop was two for five with three RBIs. Still two outs. Scott Schoenweiss trying to get out of this. New Ben Grieve walked. Next man up. Adam Pia. There's no to put him. Walked in a run. Tied up at this point. Next man up, Eric Chavez. No to put him. Five walks in the inning for Schoenweiss. It's three two A's. Next man up, Ramon Hernandez this time. And Hernandez, still two outs in the inning. Puts the jaws through. Well, let's go. Stand up, let's go. Five, two A's. All five runs coming in with two outs. In the inning, Sean Weiss throwing 46 pitches in that inning. Didn't get much better from there. Next inning, Miguel Tejada here. Taking Sean Weiss, did. Taking him out. 29th home run of the year for the shortstop. 7-2 A's. Top of the six now. Men on second and third from Garrett Anderson. Tim Hudson, he struck him out. Five Ks for Hudson. Bottom of the eighth, two on for Jason Jambi. Yeah, that's good to go. One for four, but it's a big one. Puts it out. Three run shot, 41st home run. And the A's take this one 10 to 3. Oakland has now won 18 of their last 23 games. Hudson gets the win. Twins don't get the advantage of the Indians having played already that day. Kenny Lofton on first, going in hard, trying to break up the double play. Omar Vizquel, two outs in the inning, but take another look. Lofton bangs his head off the knee of Jason Maxwell. He'd be dazed, but smelling salts involved. Not a banned substance. He'd stay on. Bottom of the third. Two out. No score. Lofton on first. Omar Vizquel drills that. Lofton coming around. Relay. Relay. We're going to have a play to the... We're not going to have a real play to the play. Vizquel two for four in the game. It's one nothing tribe. Tory Hunter up. He's the starter. Said Hunter, we're jealous of them. We want to ruin it for them. He's hitting 438 against them. Drills that out. His fifth home run of the year. It's tied up 2-2. He's getting it done. In the sixth, Indians threatening. Bases loaded, two outs. Jim Tomey in a 9 for 76 slump going into this at bat. Cheap. It'll do. Definitely does the job. Goes through. Puts in the run. And 4-2 is the final score. In Reds have now won seven of the last nine. At this rate, McKeon may save his job if the Reds win out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, sometimes I just crack. You're a funny guy. It's Steve Ferris on the hill for the Reds, and he's looking for his 12th win, 13th win of the, win of the season, and that kid has problems. Top of the fifth, one out. Two nothing Brewers. Chris Stein bigs up for his 12th home run of the season. Still two to one Brewers. Bottom of the fifth, now two outs. Richie Sexton. Doubles to right center. Marquise Grissom and Jeff Jenkins are going to score. Milwaukee takes a 4-1 to one lead. Next batter, Jeremy Burnett. And I believe Jeremy spoken. Doubles to right center. Richie Sexton comes in. 5-1 to one Brewers after five innings. Let's go to the bottom of the sixth now. Ron Ballone now on the hill facing Marquise Grissom. And Marquise with again to the left. Raul Casanova. Oh, Casanova. Six to one, Milwaukee at that point. Next batter, Mark Loretta. And it is safe at first. Alex Ochoa. Flips these. Grissom scores. Seven to one, Milwaukee. The trouble continues. Top of the seventh down. Seven to one, Milwaukee. Runner on second for Sean Casey. Oh, show me some love in the club. Number 18 for Casey, 7-3 Milwaukee. Just like that with the swing of the bat. Now top of the eighth, no outs. Chris Steins 
the sacrifice fly to center. Michael Tucker scores seven to four, but that would be as close as the Reds would get. So the final looks like this. Seven to four is your final. Dimitri Young went two for four with a run scored. Sean Casey with a two run jack. He was one for three with two RBIs. Chris Stein's also bigged up two for two at the dish with an RBI, but the guys just could not get it done. So well, he's gonna get in. Phils and Cubs. Two worst teams in the league fittingly in here. Omar Dahl at the plate with two men on, doing some damage. One run will score. Two runs will score. Do it for Omar. Two nothing Phillies on the Dahl double. Bottom of the fourth, Sammy Sosa. First game back from injury, leading off against Dahl, and he struck him out. Good stuff. Dahl went six, gave up just two runs, and scattered ten hits in the ninth. Two on for Kevin Jordan at this point. Top of the ninth, 7 2 Phils. Jordan, good piece of that. Rips that. Julio Zulete is out there. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, no. One run was Two runs was gone. Where's the ball? We need a landscaper. Three run inside the park. Home run. Second in three days. And it hadn't happened before that in nine years. Take another look. Goes into the Ivy. Zulete does not put his hands up to alert the umpire. He cannot find the ball. Although it is obvious, he cannot find the ball. The umpire digs the ball. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Oh, the Phillies take this one. There it is. Doesn't help him now. And Omar Dahl, not only doesn't lose, he actually wins. First win for Dahl since August 8th. Now, a spot in the rotation will come up again on Sunday in the final game of the regular season. But Dahl said after this one, he had a sore knee and would not be able to go one more time. Brian Kingman can now go home. The last 20-game loser in the bigs was there. And he said, I want to remain the last 20-game loser. I enjoy Lowly Tampa Bay Devil Rays, O's down one. Derek Fletcher up with two on the ground. A Chris Richard, great grab, and then he'll slide to first to make the tag to end the inning. He was also one for three. Jerry Hairston, bottom of the sixth, facing David Wells. Hairston into the corner it goes. Eugene Kingsale is going to hold up at third. What about Hairston? He gets thrown out at second. Next batter, Delano DeShields, runner on third. Wells still there, and why not? He was pitching great. A shot. Eugene Kingsale would score. DeShields slides into second. On that, he's safe. We're going to have a tie game, and it is tied at one. Next batter, Albert Bell, and Wells gets Bell. Four Ks for Wells. Game remains tied. Runners on the corners, one out. Brooke Fordyce. It's deep. How deep? Well, Martinez with a grab, and that's deep enough for Melvin Moore to tag up and score the winning run for the Baltimore Orioles. Tough one for Wells. He allows just two earned runs, seven hits through eight innings. His ERA, 3.96. The fourth devastating loss in five games for the Blue Jays. Let the feast begin in the fourth. Fred McGriff, good wood on that to center field off El Duque. Bernie Williams, three gold gloves. The Yanks out of the inning. Sixth inning. Bases are loaded with Yankees. Scott Brocious facing Albi Lopez. Lopez on a four-game losing streak, but, ooh, he struck him out. Sweet. In command. Lopez would be sharp. In the eighth, it's one nothing. Devil Rays. Two on for David Justice. Justice rips that. Jose Guillen is there. We got a play to the play. Paul O'Neill tagging, and Joe John Flaherty went and got him. O'Neill running through. Did not slide. Yankees strand nine. Roberto Hernandez in a one nothing game. Jorge Posada leading off. First pitch, gone. 1-1. One, one. Jorge, top 20 in the American League in slugging. Oof, rough way to go. But in the bottom of the ninth, Fred McGriff, two on, two outs. McGriff, two for 24 lifetime against Mike Stanton going into that at bat, but that was a big at bat. Drives it in, McGriff delays the party. But later would say the Yankees are the Yankees. If they don't do it here, that means clinch. They'll probably do it in Baltimore. The Yankees. Johnson. Charles Johnson, uh, no competition. Six Ks for Pedro. He left after five innings. He said his left knee was sore. You know, his left side was sore. It was his choice, but he's all right. No more Garcia Parra hitting a max fly. 20th home run of the year for Garcia Parra. One for four. He's hitting 370 and those two RBIs. Top eight was 4-1 Boston. Carl Everett, the grounder. Jose Valentin makes the simple play in the out at first. What about Everett? He injured his tendon right near his ankle. He had to leave the game. Bottom nine, four, three now. White Sox tie run to third. Nobody out two outs now. Derek Lowe strikes out Greg Norton for this 39 save and 44 chances for Derek Lowe. And the Red Sox win four to three. Pedro Martinez improves to 12 and one on the road. The best. There's a score at this point. Brian Giles rips that out. His 34th home run of the year. Giles with a groin muscle injury said, I'm not feeling well, but we only have five games left. Bottom of the seventh. Runners on first and second. Kevin Young puts that. Oh, no. Darrell Ward, watch that go by. Welcome. Darrell, let's go.
Pirates go up 6-2. They're going to win this one. 9-4. Giles, by the way, with 122 RBIs, the most since a pi by a Pirate since Willie Stargell in 1971. Stargell had 125 that year. Jeff Bagwell leading the major leagues with an absurd top of the fourth. Brian Dempster facing Vladimir Guerrero. Vlad impales one. His 44th of the year. He was 2 for 5. He's slugging 676. That's number three in the National League. It's a 3-2 game. In the 10th, it's 4-4. First and third, no outs. Cliff Floyd gets that on Steve Klein. Marlins take it 5-4 in 10 innings. And the Marlins become the first Major League team to jump at least 10 wins a season for three straight seasons since the New York Mets did so 